Hello everybody, it's your boy Skips here, and as you can see in the title down below, what we are going to be talking about are questions that I feel need to be answered by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, and if you have any questions that you personally want answered by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, let me know in the comments down below and maybe we can discuss them. Number one, the origins of Keyblades. As I've discussed in one of my more recent videos explaining information about Keyblades in general, is that we don't really know the origins of Keyblades. The only real information that we have on the origins of Keyblades are two small pieces of information that we got from Master Xehanort's reports in Birth by Sleep. And I'm going to give you those two pieces of information right now, which are the Keyblades of the Realm of Light, which will include the Kingdom Key and many other Keyblades that we see throughout the Kingdom Hearts series, and Keyblades of the Dark Realm, which include the Kingdom Key D, and probably a whole bunch of other Keyblades that we have not yet seen. And we have the third types of Keyblades, which are known as Keyblades of Heart, which in Xehanort's reports he states that they only came into existence after the Keyblade War in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key and Union Cross which is a very interesting thing these Keyblades of Hearts only came into existence after the Keyblade War they were not something that was there beforehand meaning that the original Keyblades only had two types which were light and darkness which is a very interesting thing to note and two Xehanort notes in Xehanort Report 7 that Keyblades are said to be man-made counterparts to Kingdom Hearts, meaning that they just didn't come out of thin air, apparently they were made by somebody, and they are actually weapons made in the physical realm, but the process of their creation is still not known to us. So apparently these were created by actual people, but yet there's a huge process into getting these all-powerful and mighty weapons and for some reason they are known as counterparts to Kingdom Hearts which probably could lead us to understand a little bit about Kingdom Hearts abilities seeing as they're supposed to be a counterpart something similar to but not exactly the same so with that being said that is one thing I really want to know about in Kingdom Hearts 3 is who made the Keyblades why were they even made and what exactly is their direct connection to Kingdom Hearts whether somebody who used to live on Kingdom Hearts made the Keyblades or somebody who wanted to use Kingdom Hearts power but couldn't control it made the Keyblades to imitate it? We don't know but hopefully that can be explained later on. Question number two. What exactly is Kingdom Hearts? As we know at this point this is a big question that a lot of us want to know. This is not anything unique but we have to know. It is the end of the Xehanort saga. This is what we have all been building to. This is Xehanort's master plan. This is his goal to, uh, to open Kingdom Hearts and see what comes after. After. But with that being said, is that all that he wants to do? Because as we know from the Xano reports, there is something written in the Book of Prophecies about the person who will open Kingdom Hearts. As stated in Xano Report 4, when Kingdom Hearts is complete, it is said that the one who opens the door will bring about the creation of the next world. Such a feat is beyond any human. Or to put it in a different way, whoever opens that door will be reborn as something far greater than human. Putting that into perspective, maybe it could be simplified that maybe Xehanort wants to actually become something greater than human, possibly even a god. And yes, I know, we have dealt with gods before in Kingdom Hearts, specifically Olympus Coliseum with Hades and the Titans obviously, and Sora has beaten these beings on multiple occasions, but when it comes to direct Kingdom Hearts lore, we have never dealt with anything greater than being human. We have humans, we have Heartless, we have Nobodies, Dream Eaters, and Keyblade Wielders. Other than those little categories and some other things, none of them have ever been categorized as being something greater than human. Yes, some of these things are terrifyingly strong, but nothing to the point of what Xanor is saying in his reports. Somebody who is literally bringing in the next era of the next world. Somebody who's literally creating things as they see fit. Seeing somebody as a literal god. So with that being said, that could lead into many different things. What does this person becoming greater than human entail? Will this will this person become the next Kingdom Hearts? Will this person be trapped on Kingdom Hearts? Will they fuse with it or will they become something brand new completely? We don't know. But that is something that we know about when it comes to Xehanort's dream of 
seeing what lies beyond and what that actually entails and seeing the world after that. So leading on from there, there are a lot of things that could go down with Kingdom Hearts and what it actually is and what will happen when it finally is used to its fullest extent. But as far as we know right now, Xano purely wants to see what lies beyond when Kingdom Hearts is summoned and when it is used to create a new world, a world that's in perfect balance. Whether that is him opening it up or possibly even another character. But moving on from there, there are still some more questions that need to be answered. And one of those is, what is in the black box? It seems like everybody is looking for this damn black box. Maleficent and Pete are looking for it, and pretty much every member in Organization 13 is probably looking for it at some point throughout the game. It seems like everybody is looking for this box except for our heroes, which leads us to believe is it something that the heroes do not know about or is it something that is not necessary to the heroes completing their goal? And what exactly is inside of it? A lot of people theorize that it's the heart of the master of masters. We really do not know what is inside of this box. Most likely it has something directly dealing with the master of masters when Kingdom Hearts is finally summoned completely and it's being ushered into the next world but far as we know right now there's no real actual guesses as to what could be in that box there have been some pretty good theories but nothing that's been too concrete and honestly the only thing that we can infer upon is our own opinions of this thing but it will be central to the plot of kingdom hearts and hopefully in this game is not some overhanging plot thread at the end of the game where they have the box they haven't opened it but it's just sitting there letting us know that maybe that will be the continuation of what will start up kingdom hearts 4 and beyond Hopefully we settle this thing in Kingdom Hearts 3 and move past it. And last but not least, let's get a sense of the direction Kingdom Hearts will be going in from this point forward. As we know, I've mentioned it many, many, many times before, that Kingdom Hearts 3 will not be the last game in the series and it will only be the end of the Xehanort Saga or the Dark Seeker Saga, whichever one you wish to call it. But it will be coming to an end. And as Tetsuya Nomura said, Kingdom Hearts is Sora's story and he will be our protagonist for future games but the, obviously like many things that could be subject to change so if this is truly the end of the Xehanort saga and let's say Tetsuya Nomura changed his mind and he said you know what Kyrie, Riku, Mickey, Donald, Goofy they've been through enough stuff already I'm gonna let these guys rest they deserve a good long break and they don't have to come back for the next series I want it to be definitive in how it ends kind of letting the fans know that this is probably going to be the last time you see these characters in a prom place within the series kind of letting us know like while they may still be in the series and they'll be appearing in other games they will not be the main focus and they'll take more of a back seat compared to our new cast i would love to know that if there is something to be done after kingdom hearts 3 that is going to need sora Kyrie, and all of these characters that we have had built up throughout the first saga of kingdom hearts i wanted to no more to infer that through the secret ending that he said he is adding in some of the first week patches that he said will be coming to Kingdom Hearts 3 upon its release. So hopefully we can get a sense of all of that, whether we're going to get brand new characters or Sora and our cast of characters now are going to stay the main characters. And hopefully the secret ending is a little more clear cut compared to Deep Dive and the original Birth by Sleep secret ending in Kingdom Hearts 2. Because while I love those endings and they're really freaking cool, atmospheric, and I just love the way that they were made, they were really, really abstract, even for my taste if they stay like that so be it because then again those trailers and secret endings were more of a concept of what of ideas they to say no more had as opposed to a definitive idea as what he was going to do other than the scenes that actually play out themselves but we don't know any of the context behind them so hopefully with kingdom hearts 3's secret ending it can be a little bit more clear cut but still have an air of mystery to it that will let us be like oh I, it could possibly go this way but it could go in a whole different direction if that's the way tetsuya no more wants to take it so hopefully you guys loved listening to my ramblings if you did please hit the like button and subscribe if you have any questions that you feel like need to be answered down below leave them in the comment section down below and maybe we can have a conversation about them and with all of that being said it has been your boy skips i will see you all in the next video